everybody. So today we have a very special guest, and that is Juan Cicada, who is going to be talking to us about something for Knowledge Graph as a solution. So often people get very excited about Knowledge Graph. They understand the value that Knowledge Graph can bring to their business, but they don't really know where to get started. And more importantly, they don't have the skills or the resource to actually build it out. Data.World, who has a long track record of understanding this space into helping you with that kind of conundrum. But I am very excited to share this because honestly, this would help a lot of people out. And Juan and Data.World are just great people to talk to. So if this is interesting to you, make sure you stick around and let's get started. First of all, just introduce yourself for those that don't know who you are. Hey, Ashley, always a pleasure to chat with you. Uh, so my name is Juan Cicada. I'm the principal scientist at Data.World. I mean, Data.World is a data catalog, and our entire data catalog platform runs on a knowledge graph. So every single everything in Data.World is in RDF. It's a graph. It's internal. We have our own model, our own ontology to go represent all your metadata. So we actually see your first knowledge graph should be of your metadata. And that's why your data catalog needs to be powered by a knowledge graph. So think about it. What is what is a data catalog about all your metadata? It's how things are connected, right? Remember, knowledge graphs is about integrating data and knowledge at scale. What is the knowledge here? Hey, you got resources. Those resources are about things. You got people who are associated to those resources. Those resources can be data resources, like a table, right? They can be analytical resources, like a dashboard. They can be terms, like business mm -hmm. glossary terms are resources. And all these things are connected. They have people associated to them. A table has columns and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. A table is related to a business term. That's your initial graph. So that's why your, your your data catalog must be powered by a knowledge graph. And if you actually look at like all the new open source uh, data catalogs that are coming out yeah. there, they're all built on graph technology. Yeah. For, uh, yeah. and, and the advantage of, of having a data catalog built on a knowledge graph is that you can easily extend that. So yeah. we, if if you support X amount of, of tools that you can go catalog and somebody comes around, hey, can you go catalog Y? I'm like, no. But yes, you can easily <laughs> extend that because it's a new, I don't know, we support Tableau and we don't support your other, yeah, yeah. we can support, extend that, so forth. So that's why a graph is flexibility and all that stuff. Yeah, well, and, and I want to pause there for a second, though, because I think that as many videos as I have done on, on Knowledge Graph and as many uh, vendors as I've talked to, I think that that's one piece that a, pe a lot of people forget about why graph, right? There's a lot of reasons to go with graph. Um, a lot of reasons not to go with graph, right? It's not a solution for everything. But one of the things that is incredibly helpful for those that aren't as familiar with graph is it is so flexible. You know, when you're dealing with uh, traditional databases, it's kind of like, you know, you got to really move it around and, you know, square peg, round hole kind of stuff uh, to, to make any kind of updates. And that's where a lot of that legacy system gnarly mess comes from is you got to kind of MacGyver it at some point, but with graph, you can easily extend it into some of the assets that you're talking about. Graphs in general enable enable serendipity because you have that flexibility, right? You can you can support the known use cases, but then you can support the unknown use cases very, very easily. In, a, in your traditional uh, relational technology, it's fantastic. The best thing if you if you have very fixed known use cases, yes, that's what you should go use. Now, when it comes to like cataloging and your metadata and stuff, it's like you don't know what's out there that you need to go catalog. Tomorrow, you're going to go catalog an API. Well, I, mm -hmm. and they're going to have different requirements and cataloging a, JD, a relational database type of stuff. So that's why you want to have a very flexible model. And that's why your knowledge, your data catalog should be built on a knowledge graph. And we've already been working with other customers that have seen this. And, and when you hit that wall of like, wait, there's this different people using the same <laughs> word it means the yeah. same thing and so forth. Yep. That's when you realize, oh, I want the, I need to put knowledge on this. Yep. That's when you enter the knowledge graph side. So our data catalogs are about crawling, but that's the first step. That's your foundation. And then we take folks onto this walk and run journey. If somebody said, great, Juan, I'm really excited. What can you give me? All right. So I'd like to think about this like kind of four four different pillars. So that first pillar is the catalog, right? That's your 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 I need to bring in my technical metadata. I want to have a business glossary. I need to do data mm -hmm. governance and all that stuff, right? And those are the data catalogs. Mm -hmm. Now, the next pillar is about thinking about designing the business world. Mm -hmm. And you want to be able, and this is what I will call like the, the knowledge management panel. 
-hmm. And you have to do things like domain modeling. Let's mm -hmm. go, let's go draw the bubbles and lines that yeah. are in that the business users think about. So that's one thing. And then I need to be able to go connect that model, the model, the ontology, the semantic layer, all the same stuff. And they go connect that with the data, with the raw data sources that I have. And that's another part, which is the schema mapping. So I need to go say, yeah. hey, F name means first name. That's the easy yep. stuff. But yep. hey, the and the business thinks about an order has a net sales. Well, what does net sales mean? Well, it's this query complication. So what is a customer? <laughs> what is a customer? Exactly. What all these things, right? That's a schema mapping. And then also you need to go do understand how to do entity resolution. Yeah. So hey, I got Bob Smith and I got Robert Smith. Like, oh, they're actually the same or they're not. Yeah. So yeah. that's that that's that level, that pillar of knowledge management. Mm -hmm. Um and then from there, you say, well, I'm modeling, I'm designing all this stuff. I need to actually now go build, all, put all this data, put, put all that knowledge and data together in the graph. So you can go build it and you need a graph database, right? I need a place to go store this. I need a place yeah. I can go query this. I also want to have virtualization because you know what? Maybe my data is so big that there's no reason. I don't want to move it into a graph database. I want to keep yeah. it where it is and, and, and virtualize it and run queries in terms of Mm -hmm. of the model, the semantic layer, the ontology, and rewrite mm -hmm. queries to the source. That's what we call the data management pillar. And then the, the last pillar is the, the usage pillar. It's like, okay, I got data in a graph. So what? Well, you got to go use it. You got to go expose it. You got to be able to start what we call, you got to go start treating data as a product and go creating data yeah. products. And, and these are the things that your end users, your consumers are actually yeah. going to go off and start using them. So to be very specific, in that first pillar of the knowledge management, we have our tool Grapho. So Grapho mm -hmm. is our tool where you can visually and, 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 and in real time in a collaborative way, create your mm -hmm. domain, your ontologies. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a tool that came from my company, Capcenta, where we're literally, it's uh, like a drag and drop. I can yeah. like a domain modeling meets Google Docs. So it's all yeah. real time. You can share. We brought in all the schema mapping capabilities. So I can go connect yeah. to sources that you've cataloged and create these mappings. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a lot of work with entity resolution that you can yeah. go do. And then on the data management, data.world, the platform itself, can serve as a database if you need to. Actually, mm -hmm. we ourselves use every single data set within data.world is stored in RDF. And we and to get mm -hmm. a little bit more technical, uh, all our storage layer is something called RDF HDT, which is the compressed format for RDF. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, we know that you have your, your favorite graph database, and we yeah. can to that too, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, we have all the graph virtualization technology too. So mm -hmm. you can, once you create the mappings, you can create the queries and you mm -hmm. can run the queries and virtualize them. And then you have all our data catalog capabilities for the data products. So you can then search them and, and discover them, go look yeah. at those queries, get the people connected with everything. So I think a lot of people, they think about knowledge graphs, they equate them as a graph database. Mm -hmm. that's probably the first step Yep. Well, you start going doing something, you realize, wait, there's so yeah. much on there. There's a domain, yeah. there's a schema mapping, there's the entity resolution. I yeah. need to go discover this. I need to go query and go virtualize. Yeah. It's not just that. So we're yeah. all these pillars. It almost seems like you're getting all that connective tissue, right? Like there's there's distinct pieces to the puzzle, right? There's, there's an architecture um, and you could try to figure it out on your own. <laughs> in in your ample amount of free time at your work, which no one has, um, or you could go and pay someone to do it for you um, that is maybe a consultant, like an individual person, and you don't know them per, per se, and, and you know they don't really know your business well, or you could partner some, with someone like yourself, where it's almost like you have a lot of that experience at that catalog layer and that schema layer, so you are... Uh, I think we mentioned this in in another uh, call that we've done. Uh, you're you're like the data therapist, right? You act, you know the questions to ask. You know you know how to walk people through you know the 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 grapho piece, right? Like okay, if why are these two things connected? Because understanding why they're connected helps you with that last pillar that you were mentioning, which is how do people use this as a product? And I think it helps with that advocacy too, right? So there's a big piece in there that you can't help with. You can maybe help support, but you can't do it. And that is, you have all the architecture, you've proven it out, people are going to, you know, potentially use it, but then you got to get them to use it, right? Yeah. 
And and that's the part that I, I I know talking to you, you're very supportive. You help people like figure it out. You know what's the pitch? But that's the part that the business owner at a, at a company is should they should be focusing on that and working with you to figure out what that is. And then they shouldn't have to worry about all that architectural piece because that's hopefully what you could do. <laughs> this, this is this is so spot on. And I always think, look, it's going to be a build versus buy situation. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've. So what we see a lot is, okay, I have uh, I need to do customer 360, right? Oh, well, I'm going to go use, a, there's CDPs out there. I'm going to go use our MDM tools and all that stuff, right? At some point, your organization is going to be, is going to be growing and they're saying, you know what, I'm going to, I'm outgrowing these standard off the shelf tools that do customer 360. Why? Because your data is more complex. You're getting more data and you can't, and, and, and those tools are very fixed. You realize, okay, I'm outgrowing this thing. I need to go do something else. Is there another silver bullet? Well, guess what? There isn't. So yeah. you're going to go off yeah. and say, okay, I need to go, I need to go build something. You're going to go prototype, but you realize I don't want to spend my resources, my expertise on doing that connective tissue that you're saying. Yeah. yeah. On the yeah. plumbing. I want to yeah. go spend my resources doing something with the data that's going to make me money exactly. or save money. Not all the plumbing stuff. That's yeah. the stuff that you should go buy while yeah. you can go build those yeah. new types of products and services over that data. And then the other aspect is it's not just about technology. And and yeah. this is you throw a product out there. You said it right now, the data therapist, right? Yeah. I think for, for all, all of these pillars that I talked about, there's specific types of services. So in the yep. design, you want to have that knowledge scientist doing the data therapy to yep. figure out, hey, yep. what does this mean? And let's get in the whiteboard. Yep. Let's get in front of a tool like Graph and do this. When it comes to building, you want to have architecture advisement. Okay, should I move this to a graph? Should yep. I keep it virtualized? What should I go do? What should I go mm -hmm. move? How should I update? Depends on your use cases and stuff. And then on the usage, it's about starting to think about data as a product. Yeah. Here's this data product. What is it? Who's going to consume it? Who's the owner of it? What are the requirements? How to keep up to date? How am I satisfying? Yeah. The, how am I uh, responding to feedback and so forth? These are new. This is a paradigm yeah. shift about yeah. it. So it's yeah. the technology, but it's also these services that get connected to. And, you know, I almost feel like it's a disservice to call build versus buy. I know that's how we all talk about it, but it's not totally buy or not totally build in this in this situation because you, you're a partner, you're like the safety net, right? It's not, you're just shoving it over, you know, people shove it over to you and you figure it out and then it's a black box. That's not what's happening. And it's not like they're giving up all control um, of what's going on. There's still a very um, important piece to this that, that the um, business is still, you know, functioning. It's that they shouldn't have to worry about what foundations did we use cement block? Did we dig it deep enough? They should just worry about, hey, my kitchen works well and I'm a cook. That's what it, I should worry exactly. about. Exactly. You think a cook is going to be worried about what type of bricks they use in their kitchen? It's the last thing. I mean, they won't even exactly. think about it. Right? Exactly. Right? And it, it, I mean, and you need to go spend your time. If you're a cook, make the best damn dish. Yep. Yep. And, 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 you, and you can go in and trust that you're getting a kitchen that you can enjoy. Yeah. With. Yeah. That's what you need to go start thinking about. Yeah. And, and the reason I think that, you know, obviously there's a lot of consultants, a lot of other people doing stuff like this. But what I feel, and I do not work for your company, this is my honest opinion, but I know that you folks really look at the standards and you look at the best practice and you are helping people build out and understand those things so that, um, you know, going back to our, our house analogy here, you know, I'm not going to try to figure out how to rewire my kitchen because I'm probably going to do it wrong. I could probably figure it out on my own, but is I that don't good, know. Is that, is that good use of your time? <laughs> it's not good use of my time. I don't know the codes, right? I don't know how to build it to code. And I don't know the best practice. I don't know the tips and tricks, but you do, right? So that's why even if you, you know, don't don't go with, you know, data.world and what they're doing, you need to look for people that really understand the standards and the best practices, which I know data.world does. And that's how you're going to make sure that you don't get shoddy craftsmanship when you're, you know, farming out some of the build so that you don't have to worry about it. All right, and with that, I wanna thank you very much for watching. This is the place to watch for new Knowledge Graph technology things that are going to be showing up in the mainstream. 
And if you have any other solutions you want me to check out, make sure you leave it in the comments below. So with that, I want to thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.